إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عليه توكلنا إليه أنبنا إليه المصير خصنا بخير كتاب أنزل وخير نبي أرسل وخير منهاج شرع فقال عز من قائل اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى, الأم وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا مع زمرته يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويه بليف فير الله as he should be feared and do not accept as Muslims أما بعد فأن خير الكلام كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة Truly the best of the words is the book of Allah and the best of the guidance is the sunnah of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام and the worst of the matters are the false innovation in the religion any such thing is a misguidance If I can ask my brothers inshallah to come a little closer it's a little hard outside inshallah just so we can accommodate more brothers inside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس, تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون على المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. You were the best nation sent to humanity. You enjoin the good and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were the best nation sent to humanity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this status, but this status is conditional. So it is not a generic status. We're not genetically better than anybody else. We're like everybody else. We're not inherently better than anybody else, but there are certain conditions. If we meet them, then we will be that we will have that status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about. He says, you enjoin the good and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the belief is basic, it has to be there. But after that, that belief has to translate into something. I cannot say that I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keeping that to myself. What value would I have to humanity? When Allah says you are the best nation sent to humanity, so my belief has to translate into something that will be of benefit to humanity. Otherwise, I will not be better to humanity than anybody else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you enjoin the good and you forbid the evil. So there's an action that is involved. That belief has to translate into something. I see something wrong, I speak against it. I see something really good, I encourage it. I help with that. And the Prophet ﷺ, if I see anything wrong in the streets, I will remove that. And that's part of my belief. If I'm driving on the freeway, and I see something that could harm anybody else, I will call 911 and I will report it. And that's part of my belief. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ says. He says, الْإِيمَانُ بِدْعٌ وَسَبْعُونَ شُعْبَةٌ أَعْلَاهُ قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَدْنَاهُ إِمَاطَةُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ وَالْحَيَاءُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنْ شُعْبَةٌ شُعْبَةٌ مِنْ شُعْبَةٌ الْإِيمَانِ He says, Iman is 70 some parts. The highest of which is to believe in the oneness of God, and the lowest of which is to remove harm from people's way, all people. So removing harm from people's way is part of our belief. That's why that belief has to translate into a benefit. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have sent you as a mercy to all the words, not just the, of course, not just the Muslims, and not just the humans, but all the words. A mercy to the animals, a mercy to the plants, a mercy to the environment, to everything else. Now obviously that has to translate into action. If I keep it to myself, how would that be a mercy to the others? Unless I translate it into something. But subhanAllah, sometimes we find some excuses and some justifications for not doing what we're supposed to do, for not getting involved. There are certain tricks that we play sometimes on ourselves for not doing so. Inshallah, I'll be covering some of them today, and then the next khutbah, I'll be covering some more. One of them, and this is a question, subhanAllah, I always ask myself, by looking at my own behavior, by the way, and then the other people's behavior, as to why sometimes do we not implement what we learn? We hear lectures, and we read certain things, and we learn about certain things, and we know that doing these things is against Islam, or doing such thing is not too Islamic. You know, when it comes to dealing, especially with the opposite gender, when it comes to uh, acting in certain ways, you know, and, and we know what's right, and we know what's wrong, but sometimes we don't follow. 
So the question is, why do we not do that? Well, I ask yourself that question. Of course, each person has a different reason, maybe. But there are certain reasons that in a way are universal across the board. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes tells us about our own reality, certain things that we, not, we may not know. And then when you read them, Allah, that makes sense. Of course, the one who created is the one who legislated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes uncovers our own justification. There's a great verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I was reading subhanAllah, just pondering about that. Yes, yes, that applies to me, and probably some other people as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ بِأَمَانِيِّكُمْ وَلَا بِأَمَانِيِّ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُرْزَبِهِ It is not what you wish, or what the people of the book wish, whoever does something bad, he will be punished for it. Now I was thinking, why did Allah say, Allah's talking to me. Why did Allah mention the people of the book? It is not what you wish, and what the people of the book wish, anyone who does bad or does wrong, he will be punished for it. Now what do the people of the book think? The people of the book, the Christians and the Jews. If you look at the Christians, what they think is that you can do whatever you want so long as you believe in the blood of Christ, then you're saved. And the Jews, of course, they think that they're the chosen people. They can do whatever they want and get away with it. How is that connected to what we do sometimes? You know, sometimes we think in a similar way. Is that so long as I'm a Muslim, everything is forgiven in advance in a way. Or so long as I have that belief, Allah will forgive me. Now it is good to think positive of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet says, the Hadith Qudsi, that, Ana anda dhanni abdi bi, that whatever my servant thinks of me, I will be that. But not to stretch it too far. Because that's really what see, the other nations will do. That's what the other nations do. In a, in a way, they think that we can do sin left and right, so long as you believe in the blood of Christ, that's fine, everything will be forgiven in advance. Or so long as we are the chosen people, because we're better than anybody else. Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat nas, right? So we're better than anybody else, so we can get away with it. Yes, but Allah has put conditions. That's why after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is not what you wish, that's what I wish. I wish that everything will be forgiven in advance, and I take Allah for granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of the verse, مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُزَّبِهِ Anyone who does anything wrong, anything evil, will be punished for it. So things, there'll be accountability, there'll be punishment in there. It is not just things that I wish for, just because, wallahi, I'm, I come from a certain background, or just because I'm a Muslim, everything is forgiven to me in advance. No, that's not true. No, Allah is the all-forgiving. Tell my servant that I'm the all-forgiving and the all-merciful. And my punishment is the most painful of punishments. Again, not to go to the other extreme, but a lot of time we take things lightly and we take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granted. So sometimes this is one of the tricks that we play on ourselves into in a way thinking that, well, I'm different. I'm above. Wallah, I'm not different than anybody else. Allah says there are certain conditions. If I meet them, then I will be above the others. If I don't meet them, then I will not be above the others. What makes me better than anybody else? It is only the belief that I carry. So this is sometimes one of the tricks that we play on ourselves at the personal level. There's another trick that sometimes we play for not getting involved, is the excessive humbleness, so to speak. You know, humbleness is great. And the Prophet ﷺ says that, لا يدخل الجنة من قال في كان في قلبه مثقال وذرة من كبر that he who has a trace of arrogance in his heart will not enter a Jannah. That's what the Prophet says, that's scary, wallahi. But sometimes we go to the other extreme, into excessive humbleness. Uh, brother, we need somebody to help. Wallahi, I'm not good enough. Pick somebody else. <laughs> somebody has to do it. Humbleness is good, but when it comes too much, it becomes paralyzing. Now who are the most humble people? The Prophets, alayhim salam. But Yusuf, alayhi salam, Joseph, in Surah Yusuf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Yusuf himself says, إِجْعَلْنِي عَلَى خَزَائِنِ الْأَرْضِ إِنِّي حَفِيظٌ عَلِيمٌ Put me in charge of the treasury. I'm capable and I can do the good job. It doesn't mean he was arrogant. He's praising himself. No, no. He took that as a base actually for doing some action. That's why excessive humbleness can be paralyzing. We have to be humble. That's what the Prophet says, alayhi salatu was salam. But when that humbleness gets in the way, that means it's too much. You have too much of it. And sometimes, by the way, it's an excuse for not getting involved. We need somebody that helps with the masjid, somebody that teaches with the Sunday school. Wallahi, I'm not good enough. 
he's better. Yeah, yes, he's better and he's doing something else. You know, we want you as well to roll up your sleeve and to come and help us as well. The second thing that we do sometimes for not implementing or for not getting involved is exaggerated fear or exaggerated unfounded fear. We fear something, we fear someone. Why does the sister not wear hijab? Because she will not get a job otherwise. You know, why does the brother not help? Because somebody will discriminate it against, will discriminate against. So he changes his name into something else and he will not do certain things. Why don't you help? Well, somebody might be listening. Then you know who, right? They'll be listening. The FBI will be listening. They're recording. Wallahi, you know what? You may not be that important, by the way. But sometimes, and Wallahi, let them listen. Subhanallah. Yeah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the message to Fir'aun, right? He sent Musa and Harun, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Say nice words to them, to the Fir'aun. So the message was sent to them as well. This message that we have was sent to them. Wallahi, let them listen. Maybe they'll develop some God consciousness which they need very badly and they can benefit from. Let them listen to that. This is a benefit to everybody else. And we fear so many things. The job, the lack of job, the lack of oppression, all of that. Well, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is the support of Allah anywhere in that equation? What I'm fearing everybody else. But what about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I take that into consideration? Or this is something that is left at the end. We became, we became excessive planners, so to speak. We plan everything excessively up to the point that we forgot the most important thing out of the equation, which is the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we fear. Or sometimes we fear, you know, we fear mistakes. That if I do something, I will do wrong. Well, this is how you learn, you know. I mean, it's a process. We all learn. Nobody's infallible except the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. So if you're sure of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, and we all are, then you will commit mistakes. Don't expect perfection in getting involved. Another thing which is involved, which is probably related to that, that last point, as one of the tricks that we sometimes we play into not getting involved, or for not getting involved, is expecting perfection without working toward it. Expecting perfection without working toward perfection. Some of us expect things to be laid down perfect for them to come and get involved. Well, if things are perfect, then there's no need for you to get involved. You know? But that's why we need your help. We need your help with the masjid, with the institutions that we have. We need you to be involved in that. And if you expect it to be perfect, then you have to contribute toward that perfection. Otherwise, things will never be perfect. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they were not perfect. They were mistakes. They were problems at the time of the Prophet. At any time that will happen, so long as we're living in this world. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ That have taqwa of Allah as much as you can. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. So what is required is for you to do as much as you can. Whatever you can. You know, not to be perfect if you expect... Now we try to aim for perfection, by the way. And we try to do things in the best way. But if that's what we expect and nothing less than that, then we'll be disappointed all the time. So that's one of the tricks sometimes we play is expecting perfection. And there's nothing wrong with expecting perfection, but expecting perfection without working toward that perfection, doing something toward that. Another thing which is another trick that we play is, uh, how should I say it, uh, a feeling of contentment, uh, deceived contentment so to speak. And sometimes we're satisfied with the present situation. And in both cases, by the way, this is the opposite of the previous trick. And in both cases, in a way, we're using these as an excuse for not getting involved. So the first group is saying that things are not perfect, you know, things are problematic, I'm not going to get involved. This one is saying that everything is nice and rosy, there's no need for me to be involved. And at the end, the result is one, is there's no need for me to be involved. Sometimes we try to exaggerate the good into, in a way, portraying a perfect situation where there's nothing need to, you know, nothing, 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 nothing is wrong. Yeah, why are you making such a big deal out of it? Look at that, everything is going nice. Look how many people we have, alhamdulillah, today in this room. That's a lot of Muslims. But you know how many Muslims are outside this room? And I'm not talking about outside, praying outside. I'm talking, you know, about outside the masjid. That's why you can look at this and think, well, this is great, that's a lot of people, alhamdulillah. And this is great, we thank Allah for that. But you know how many people are there outside the masjid that don't even come to Jumu'ah? That's why you don't want to exaggerate that. And you know what? Each person has something to contribute. There's something that you can do. Because there are certain people that you can reach that I don't know about. There are certain people that you can help that others actually cannot see. 
So each person has something to offer. But sometimes we find excuses in a way saying that it's, it's impossible, it's an impossible situation, or it's too good. You know, there's a statement they say that some people will say that the problems of the Muslim community today, here, are the results of the previous generation. And the one who will solve it is the next generation. So in other words, I might be doing good enough by sitting and waiting for the next generation to come. You know, just, I'm a transitional period. Well, if I don't do anything to, pre to prepare the next generation, it's going to be a repetition of the present situation, generation, if not even worse. That's why there's a role to be played in that. Somebody has to contribute to make a difference. Otherwise, changes will not happen on their own. Somebody has to lead the change. And it is good for that to be you and me, Wallahi. Because this way we'll be setting precedents and we'll be in a way harvesting the biggest reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, anyone that starts a good precedence, he will have its reward and the reward of anyone that follows its course afterward. But somebody has to start. And somebody must start. And if we're talking about ourselves being the best nation sent to humanity, it is this that will make us the best nation sent to humanity. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفرون الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا. I'm moving quickly so there will not be anything left for the next khutbah but that's good inshallah it's of benefit uh, the last trick that we give sometimes or we play on ourselves for not being involved or doing what we have to do is blaming others blaming somebody you know people like others to carry the burden of their own mistakes that it's because of them it's because of you know the kids do that by the way but guess what the grown ups they do that as well sometimes not as obvious but we do it in a more sophisticated way that is not really as apparent as, as the kids will do it. Sometimes we blame the shaitan. Of course the shaitan, right? <laughs> you know, sometimes we say the shaitan is the one that made me do that. Well, let me tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the shaitan. Allah says in Surah Ibrahim, this is what Allah says. So that's what the shaitan does. Allah says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَوَعَدْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِحُكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِي إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ This is Surah Ibrahim. Allah says that the shaitan says after everything is decided, Allah promised you the truth and I promise you falsehood. And I did not have any power over you except that I invited you and you followed me. That's what Allah says the shaitan will say. So that's what the shaitan can do. I invited you and you followed me. So don't blame me and blame yourself. I will not be of any help to you today and so you will not be of any help to me either. I have rejected that which you associated me with. We blame the shaitan. I'm not saying the shaitan is, is nice, you know. But we blame the poor one. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> we, we blame the shaitan too much sometimes. We give him too much credit. You know, the Prophet ﷺ says, well, one of you trips and falls, don't say, cursed be the shaitan. Because you're giving him too much credit. The Prophet says when you do that, the shaitan will feel big and strong and very significant, but the shaitan is not that significant. Allah called him al-waswas al-khannas. He hides. So don't give him too much credit. The shaitan just whispers. And after that, it is our decision to follow or not. Another, another one that we blame sometimes, of course, is, uh, is the Muslims. Of course, we blame others. Uh, maybe I'll leave that to some other time. But that's, that's one that we do sometimes, is that we blame the Muslims. Yeah, the Muslims are backward. The Muslims will never learn. The Muslims will never be organized. Well, let me ask you something. Who are these Muslims? That's you and me, right? You know, unless we're talking about somebody else. See, I should feel myself part of these Muslims. This is part of my wala. I'm one of them. So if I'm talking about them in a negative way, I'm talking about myself. Or otherwise, as if I'm feeling that I'm above all of the other Muslims, and I sit there, you know, diagnosing problems and distributing responsibilities. That's what people actually think. And there's a great hadith by the Prophet ﷺ. Well, it's great to keep in mind. He says, the Prophet says, "Man qala halak al qawm, fahwa ahlakuhum." Anyone that says people are lost, mean the ummah, the name the Muslims. Anyone says that says that people are lost, they're doomed. The Prophet says he's the one that is most lost among them. 
he's the one that is most lost. There's another version of the hadith, man qala halaka al-qawm fa huwa ahlakahum. Anyone that says people are lost, he's the one that caused for them to be lost by that negative attitude. So when we're talking about the Muslims, it is us. And if you see any flaw, anything that is not done properly in the masjid, Wallahi, Jazakallah khair for seeing that, roll up your sleeve and come and help me out. We need everybody's help. Nobody's above that. Because these things that we're talking about came down to every single Muslims. The shara' did not come down to a select group of Muslims that they are entrusted to do all the job and I just sit and watch. You know, they will be uh, helping me or delivering for me and I just sit and receive whatever they give. Now, of course, there will always be people that will work hardest. But you want to be part of those people because those are the people that will have the most reward. Those are the people that will monopolize the goodness in this world and the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us perseverance in this life and in the hereafter. Amen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us recognize the truth and help us follow it. And to help us recognize the evil and help us avoid it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the best of our deeds, the last ones that we do. And the best of our days, the day that we shall meet him. And Allah amarana bi amrin amin bada'a bi nafsihi wa thanna bi malaikati qudusih. فقال ولم يزل قائلا عليما حكيما أن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وعلي بفضلك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم من أراد بالمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد بهم شرا فخذه أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم يا واصل منقطعين أوصلنا إليك اللهم ولا تخزنا يوم العرض عليك اللهم وزقنا رضة النظر إلى وجهك الكريم اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة